If you were to answer a question, a simple question, three words, what would your answer be? Who am I? Who am I? What's the most fundamental way I can answer that question? There are many answers to that question. We could talk about our nationality, our family, our profession, our political party, um, our enthusiasms, our hobbies, the places that we're from. Many answers to the question, who am I? Because we have multi-layered identities. But who am I basically? What's the meaning of my life? How do I sum it up? Mary, just a teenager, knew who she was. Before she said yes to the angel, she identified herself. Behold, I am the handmaid. I am the servant of the Lord. Then let it be. That's a beautiful response worth our pondering on, you know. In your deepest identity, do you consider yourself the servant of the Lord? It's a real question. Mary, just a teenager, knew who she was. I've known people, very educated, successful people in their 70s and 80s who still didn't know who they were. And so Mary kind of challenges us, doesn't she, to get to the root of ourselves because at the very root of who we are, there is the mystery of God and his will. We read in Jeremiah, the very first chapter, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. That's not just true of Jeremiah and the Virgin Mary, it's equally true of us. In our parish prayer card, which I invite you to take since we have many visitors here tonight, there's this prayer on the second page from the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. I know well the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your woe. So what are the plans the Lord has in mind for you? What are you meant to accomplish in your life? What path is he opening up before you? Because our happiness lies in what Paul, the, Pope Francis said is abandonment to the message of God. He is speaking about the Virgin Mary, he said, she was abandoned to the message revealed to her. She did it herself, voluntarily. And that is what we are meant to do, to discern God's will in our life and then to fulfill it. And in the difficult times of our life, Christians, for two millennia have turned to Mary for her intercession. It started at the marriage feast of Cana where they ran out of wine. Jesus was not particularly interested. Mary said they ran out of wine. What, is that my job? Is that, why am I interested in that? Please do something about it. Do whatever he tells you. That was his first miracle. And ever since, Christians have approached Mary and asked for her intercession. This is not a simple fact. Let me share with you for a moment the most miserable time in my life, the loneliest time in my life. I was just a teenager and I was in the novitiate of a religious community. A novitiate, which is 366 days, which has to be a day longer than a year, of silence, work, prayer, instruction. I hated it because I wasn't nearly mature enough to absorb the wisdom they were trying to share with me. 
It was a miserable existence. I couldn't wait for it to be over. And one day I got a call to go up to see the novice master, and he said, your family just called, your father died of a heart attack. I said, my father doesn't have a heart problem. He said, well, he's died. You have to go home to the funeral. It was, it made a miserable year all the more miserable because he died violently at his own hand and his faith was in me. He was a religious man his whole life. Sometimes life gets just too much for a person and he did away with himself. So I went, went back to that horrible monastic environment, which is beautiful in some ways, but not if you're a teenager. And I just felt so terribly lonely and bereft. And so what did I do? Is I went into the woods where there was this shrine to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I knelt down there and I said, I am totally miserable. I cannot go through this whole seminary experience. If I'm going to survive at all, I really need your help. It was a very sincere prayer, and it's why I am a priest today, because I had a difficult time in the seminary. They eventually threw me out. The rector called me in after nine years with the religious community and he said to me, the church has enough problems already. <laughs> Go out, get married, find a job. So I thought, well, I guess my vocation is to go back to New Hampshire where I was from and be a priest there. And New Hampshire wouldn't take me back. They said, if they had you for nine years and don't want to ordain you, you can't come home. So I was, I was just invited to Washington to stay in Washington because I was working with some of those priests in St. Joseph's Parish. And so I said, well, that must be God's will for me. You see, God's will is twists and turns in our lives. And sometimes we think God has forgotten about us. God's not aware of us. Our suffering is just something that he's not attuned to. And, and yet God's plan is working itself out in our lives. Below the level of which we are even aware. Now, I've been a priest for 53 years. I would choose it all over again. And I want to thank Mary for the fact that I am a priest, that I love being a priest. And I think that towards the end of your life, as you experience the twists and turns, the ups and downs, you'll be able to look back and say, thank God for Mary, the mother of God, who knew who she was and helped me to understand who I am. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.